Let's check in with the doc and look at things with a wider lens. Pastor Richards on OMG. All right, we should have um, Doc on the line. Hello, good morning. Hey, good morning, Daniel. Let's say to you and to Shady, Mario. Morning, Doc. Everybody. Hey, Saint Vincent Grenadine. All my fellow Vincentians, whether you're in Saint Vincent or wherever you are, a very blessed morning to you. Uh, Daniel, uh, let me go ahead and also say real quick because I have to move on. I, I appreciate the feedback. I, when I came off radio yesterday, I did receive um, a bit of feedback on my commentary, so I appreciate that. Um, whether you were correcting me, um, giving me a different perspective, or whether you were agreeing uh, or saying that I give you something to think about, just let, just know that I appreciate that. Um, Shifting gears a little bit this morning, though, Daniel, uh, and I have a lot to say um, on a very urgent matter, which is the matter of reconciliation. Mm. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but this nation is not at a good place. Mm -hmm. Honestly, this nation is not at a good place. There are so many divisive issues, individuals with divisive intentions I have to speak to it it's not good I really think we need to press reset or else we are going to implode as a nation it might not be the most popular thing to do because everybody is chasing their own ends their own agendas with their own intentions and you know a nation divided against itself is a recipe for a nation that will fall apart. Plain and simple. I don't care what our agenda, um, our worldview, our ilk or whatever. If we continue down this path of being divided against ourselves, which we are, I'm telling you it's a recipe for not only a fractured nation, but a nation that will basically fall apart. I remember post-election, many of you who listen to my program regularly would remember this. Post-election, I was calling for actions consistent with the election slogans. I actually lauded both slogans um, from either um, end. I remember talking about the value of this idea of lifting SVG higher. I lauded that. Applaud, I said, I said that's that's just what we need to be doing. And then, because, because again, that goes against this grain of push down, pull down mentality. X those, um, you know, get rid of those who are against you and all of that. Rather than stifling people and pushing them down, there was this notion that we're going to lift everybody up. I thought, wow, that's good. I, I, li I love this slogan, um, you know, one knee, I, I, I might not get it right because I'm not, I am not, writing it down so I don't. But I think it went like one nation, one people, one Vinci, that whole idea we are not divided, we are not tribal. We may have different or uh, diverse position, but diversity is not disunity. Diversity is not disunity. So I, 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 I like, wow, that is a good concept. Whether you are red or yellow, we are still one nation. And I thought, wow, Let's hold to that. So I, I spent an entire week, Daniel, talking about these things. But the question I want to ask, are the current actions consistent with this whole notion of listing SVG higher? Are you seeing that? Current actions. Are you seeing in the current actions one nation, one people, one Vinci? I mean, why are we so tribal, so divided, so at odds. And I tell you why, Daniel. I tell you why. Mario, we have lost the art of reconciliation because reconciliation is a hindrance to us getting to what, where we want and what we want. We think that we win by bludgeoning everybody and everyone opposed to us. We sabotage the very ship we are on. Duh. 
we need to make reconciliation a priority <laughs> else we ain't going anywhere now reconciliation means that a lot of the things you want and some of your personal goals and, and by the way this is not just politics don't get me wrong this is not just politics this is in every facet and every sphere of our society because I'm a relationship counselor, I'm, I'm telling you, more than any place else is in relationships, people don't know how to reconcile. And that is why it's uh, marriages or relationships is a minefield out there. And I want to help with this today. I really want to help. I will share with you all, I will, and I, if you talk about program work, programs worth repeating this is one that's worth repeating i want to share with you all seven vital truths about reconciliation i glean these from rick warren by the way I, I follow him i glean these from him importantly these truths are anchored in what the bible says um in god's words and i will actually direct you as to where to find them seven truths about reconciliation they're very important and so we need this we need this more than anything else at this time we need this more than vaccine honestly 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 we need this more than vaccine the first truth is you have to take the initiative people at odds we have to learn take the initiative what the bible actually says in matthew 19 go one and one first I mean, we, we are in a culture right now where we figure, boy, as soon as somebody opposes us, you, you had to go at them on Facebook. You had to bring in the body. You had to take action against them. And you haven't even dealt with them one-on-one. -on -one. And for the moment, people take the initiative. You don't, you don't push them away and say, no, I don't want to hear you. We will always be at odds and do things wrong to each other. We, if somebody realizes, boy, I got I to gotta reach out. Somebody, even when, and the Bible says sometimes, even when you haven't done wrong, you should leave what you have at the altar. And, and even when you haven't done wrong, you should still go and reconcile. And when people put out the olive branch of reconciliation, it is unbiblical and ungodly. Yeah, you heard me say it. You heard me say it. Because I know what the Bible says. The Bible says you have to take the initiative and you, you, you don't bludgeon those who take the initiative. The Bible says, go find the offender, even when you are without offense. But let me move on quickly. This, you all take that thing. Eh? You see, people take initiative for reconciliation. And when somebody comes to you with the initiative of reconciliation, take it. It's biblical. Secondly, you have to put aside selfish feelings. Sometimes um, your feelings get hurt. But I tell you what the Bible, I'm, I'm anchoring everything I say in the Bible. What the Bible says sometimes when your feelings get hurt, this is in Psalm 73 and verse 21 and 22. And it's so true, so true. When your feelings get hurt, you behave like a brute animal, as if you don't have sense. You have to be careful when people hurt your feelings that you remember you're an animal. Don't, don't react instinctively like an animal. Oh gosh, you're a big man. Big man. What Proverbs 19.11 says, overlook. I'm not making this up. You have a choice to decide whether you would do what God says because God has to be right. Or you're going to do your do because it's more popular. It says, overlook the offense. The, the third truth that I want to share with you that will help in reconciliation, not just taking the initiative and pushing aside your selfish feelings that you got hurt. You can't carry feelings like a little, you know, you can't carry feelings. Uh, children do that. Thirdly, um, you've got to see your part in the conflict. Now, this is very, very important, um, Mario. Because people have this tendency, whether in um, partner relationship or what platonic or intimate or whatever, People have the, the wives come to me and they, all they could see is what the husbands have done wrong. The husbands come to me, all they could see is what the wife has done wrong and they don't ever see their part. It is hard, hard, hard to see that you are not perfect and you are at fault and you have plenty. Hmm. What Matthew chapter 7 and verse 5 says, Mario, is really instructive. It says, watch, watch, before you start putting out other people's fault out there. 
and, and, and sometimes the thing that you're picking on, on others is a small thing compared to what you have dealing with yourself. The Bible says, actually, man, look, take the log out your own eye before you start dealing with the little piece of thing in somebody's eyes. <laughs> That's Matthew chapter 7, 5. You live in a, basically, we say if you live in a glass, anyways, if you, if, if you don't see your fault, John, 1 John 1, 8, if you don't see your fault, then you say you're fooling yourself and the truth is not in you. I mean, I am not making this up. People who can't see the multitudinous faults that they have, a real fault in them. That's what the Bible says. So Mario, you know, anyway, um, the fourth thing, because, you know, I run out of time. Yeah, there's three more to go. The fourth thing, if you want reconciliation, which is urgent in this nation, you all hear me and take note. Deal with the problem rather than attacking the person. Now, that's a big one because I have watched the way we have dealt with people who uh, we consider not to be of our tribe and not with us and et cetera, et cetera, and who don't see the same way. I, I heard a word last night, the COVID ignorant. A labeling of people Wow. Who don't see the same way on <laughs> this is they have become COVID ignorant. You don't do that. Labels, we have labels for people. Somebody call me a what the name they call me the other stinking dirty labor man. <laughs> stinking dirty labor man. Maybe on that day I may have said something that may have been perceived favorable to the um ULP. Thinking that the labor man, but then again, the the, the people in labor call me frequently and tell me that I am you're showing your true colors, you're this, you're that. So, but they attack the person, you don't bring reconciliation anytime. Then he, uh, everybody knows, everybody knows me. I have to speak with integrity on this. If there's a problem between me and you or any other caller, so because I'm on public radio. So many people have issues with the thing I say, the things I say. And when they start labeling me, they know. They could call in the station and say, boy, pastor doesn't lambaste me, doesn't go on social media. This He's going to pick up the phone and call me and say, let me talk about this. You don't attack if you, you don't go after people. Where you where, where, where get it from? Where you get it from? You don't go after people. You don't use words to, to demean them, pull down their character, besmirch them excoriate them you don't do that. ephesians chapter 4 and verse 29 says watch how you respond so that the things you say whether out of your mouth on facebook on radio if you come on radio and you do a program that the things you say would be helpful and build people i have found out this simple truism you can't build people if you're tearing them down and we cannot build St. Vincent if we're tearing down Vincentians. Duh. I mean, you don't have to be really smart to figure that out. You don't have to be really smart that when you pick at, I could call names. When you pick and say, this category of people, they lose jobs or they, you, you, you cuss them out, you destroy their characters and reputation. People who are about destroying people's character and reputation, you're not about building St. Vincent. Because people are going to do wrong. People are going to do wrong. People are going to mess up. People are going to think wrong paths. People are, I could call it a number of people that have gone the wrong paths. But you see, reconciliation, reconciliation, which is what the Bible is all about, is not about destroying people. It's not. The very business tensions that you destroy, some of them are really, really good people whose skills and stuff we need. But after we have finished excoriating them and damning them, then they are not good for anything but to hide their face in a corner. We have to stop that. Where am I, Daniel? How many are gone? All right. I think... Okay. Cooper Let me just wrap up quickly. You have to cooperate. Cooperate. You see that word cooperate? Romans twelve eighteen is actually where I got this. Cooperate. As much as lies in you. And when I listen to people hearing them say, and we set a pattern and a model, Daniel, if I were to say, you around me, Daniel, and, and you come to me and you say X, Y, and Z, I say, I just say, I'm not, Daniel, how is that cooperating? 
and I find that to be counter biblical. Honestly, you might think that you have good justification, not justification is what I called in one of my commentaries. I, I, I call it a rationalization. And rationalization is not justification. You could rationalize why you might not want to do what the Bible says. But at the end of the day, it's basically this. You don't want to do what the Bible says. Now, how could that be right? If the Bible says one thing and you're doing a different thing and you're setting a different pattern, then you're anti-biblical in that particular thing. This next thing that I'm about to say is real important, people. Seek reconciliation even when, this is important, even when resolution is not possible. Because I've done this for 30 years, I know what I'm talking about on this. A lot of times, um, resolution is not possible. The man will not get back with the woman. The husband will not get back with the wife. The, the person in your organization may not get back with the employee. Things might not be the same. So you will not have resolution. But even when you don't have resolution here, this is very important. You still have to seek reconciliation. In fact, First Peter 3.11 makes it the primary thing he says peace peace make the peace even if even if you never talk to the person again um, because you all can't see eye to eye at least let it be that there's no animus between you all that is it's toxic toxic it's a, a residual toxicity make peace lastly this is the most important to me as far as i'm concerned remember who your father is. In fact, how we behave reflects who our father is. There are two possible extra um, outside of this realm fathers that we can have in terms of values and ideology and what we subscribe to. The dark side, the good side, God, Satan, however you want to term it. And what um, Matthew chapter 9 and verse, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 9 says, Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who strive and walk and make peace. Those are the children of God. That's powerful. The lineage that you represent, you show who your father is by your actions of making peace. And when you do contrary to that, you also show who your father is. I think the Bible is, uh, which we hold as our primary axis for values in the society. I think the Bible is really strong on this matter of making peace. But even if you're not a believer in the Bible, it is practical, institutionally and otherwise. If you can't make peace and if you can't reconcile, then whether it's institution or family or community or government, I mean, even right within your own party, don't make me, even right within your own party, you hear me, your party is going to fracture. Right now, that if you don't reconcile the different factions within your own party, which there are, they are there, they are there. If you don't reconcile, you mark my words. Reconciliation is necessary. Let's do it. We can do it. Oh, by the way, Daniel, and, and, and let, me, let me wrap up and say this um, real quick. On, on this weekend, because we have two services at the Kingston Baptist Church, I normally don't really put our stuff out there, but because this is of vital importance, I'll put it out there. Saturday, we have a service at 6 o'clock in the evening, well, 6 p.m. Uh, we are located at the Botanical Gardens, entrance to the Botanical Gardens, and again on Sunday um, at 10 a.m. And what I'm dealing with is something that you guys need to hear is this um, a number of things that will happen as the world ends. I mean, it, it's uncanny, it's on point. When I talk about these things and I say, look, I took, they're right there, you should have seen. Whether it is the rapture, or the tribulation, or the mark of the beast, or the thousand-year reign, or whatever. You guys need to, people are too, can't permit me to say biblically illiterate and things that are right there that they should know, they don't know, and it will unfold right before their eyes. Well, I want to unmask and um, deal with these things this weekend. So I invite you to be with us either Saturday at 6 p.m. or Sunday at uh, 10 a.m. God bless you and have a very safe weekend. And you as well. Thank you very much, Doctor. Thank you so much. Yeah, take care. Bye-bye. All right.